No, I'm not in London, England. I'm in a small island country called Antigua in the middle of Caribbean Sea. One of the smallest countries in the world, probably one of the prettiest. I have a few days here to find out. But first, a quick dip in the Caribbean Sea. Okay, now let's go explore. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the new series of VT on tour. This time we are moving to the Western Hemisphere, specifically to one of my favorite regions in the Caribbean Sea, the West Indies. In this episode we will cover a beautiful island nation of Antigua and Barbuda. We will take a look at its pristine beaches, historical monuments and different attractions the island has to offer. But first, let's have a quick geography lesson to help us better understand the region. The region itself is located between North and South America and often referred to as the Greater or Lesser Antilles. Greater Antilles include such countries as Cuba, Jamaica, Dominican Republic and other small islands. Our area of focus will be the Lesser Antilles. It is a set of islands starting just south of Puerto Rico and extending all the way to the coast of Venezuela. My goal on this trip is to visit the independent island nations in the region, and we start from Antigua and Barbuda. As the name suggests, this country consists of two major islands, Antigua being the main island with the capital of St. John's and to the north a smaller island of Barbuda. In this episode we will explore the main island, where first we will concentrate on the western or Caribbean part then move to the east to the Atlantic part and finish in the south. Let's take a quick look at some of the interesting facts about this country. The population is about 100,000, dominated by African descendants at about 88%. Christianity is the main religion here. The country covers an area of approximately 440 square kilometers. The country gained its independence in 1981 and the official currency here is East Caribbean dollar. Also, when visiting this region, I really like the flags of every country here. Here's the flag of Antigua and Barbuda. Golden sun symbolizes the dawn of a new era. Red, lifeblood of slave forefathers of the people. Blue, hope. Black, the soil and African heritage. Gold, blue and white also symbolize sun, sea and sand, the main treasures of this country. Hopefully now you understand my fascination with the flags here as each of them tell the story of these countries. Having said that, please hit that like button, subscribe to my channel and comment your thoughts on this island. It will help more people to see this episode and get to know this beautiful region. Upon our arrival to Antigua, we headed to our first beach here, around Dickinson Bay. It is located on the northwest coast and considered the most developed beach on the island, with numerous hotels, restaurants and beach bars, perhaps the most famous one being this floating bar called Contiki. Because we arrived relatively late in the afternoon, or maybe because it was about to rain, the bar was closed. Nevertheless, we took a stroll down the beach and swam for the first time on this trip. The whole experience was great, and because of the convenience and the facilities that are present here, I can see why Dickinson Bay is so popular among tourists. 
However, our absolute favorite was a small and stunning beach at Deep Bay. First of all, it's worth mentioning we stayed nearby and randomly found this gem. It is somewhat difficult to find as Google Maps take you to this random resort that's located nearby. Here is a tip. You need to pass the resort gates, continue on this somewhat broken road until you hit this bridge. Once you cross the bridge, you will see the path that will take you towards the paradise. What makes this particular beach special is the fact that it is surrounded by beautiful undulating hills. On one side occupied by what it looked like private villas and on another by the iconic Fort Barrington, which we will get to shortly. Because of this natural sheltering, there are visibly no or little waves depending on the time of the day. Add turquoise water, white sand and you've got yourself a stunning place to relax. We came here mostly in the mornings, but because it was so close to the place we stayed, on a few occasions we were here in the afternoon. That's when we start to notice a bit more life here. First from the resort that is unfortunately spoils the natural beauty, and secondly from the boats that came here with tours during the day. However, it is nowhere as busy as other popular beaches on the island. So far I'm uh, quite impressed with uh, the beaches here in Antigua. Definitely meets and beats the expectations. Probably one of the better ones that I've seen uh, ever. Uh, white sand, uh, turquoise uh, water, and they have this uh, private boats yachts uh, parked in every bay which uh, adds to the whole uh, charm of it. We love just staying at every random beach that we can find because they say there is 365 beaches here i don't know if it's true but they say that every day of the year you can go to a different beach we're not trying to attempt that so far we've been to a few of them and we liked every single of them the other thing to consider is that a lot of people get intimidated uh, seeing the uh, hotels post up at the beaches but uh, on this island and i think on quite a few islands in west indies uh, it's actually public and it's free, right? So don't get intimidated. You can literally go to any beach you like, put a blanket on and just enjoy it. And you don't need to uh, pay thousands and thousands of dollars uh, to do the same thing with the hotel. Well, anyways, uh, the point being is the beaches are great here. And uh, when you're here, try to explore as many of them as you can. Uh, I guarantee you uh, it's uh, postcard-like views here. friends with the, what are those? Hermit crabs. Yeah, Hold exactly. On. That's what she said. She Come just on. loves those. Come on. So cute. <laughs> would you eat it if it was bigger? No. Okay. These are friends. I would eat the big crabs though. Okay. As you can imagine, all these countries in the Caribbean, uh, they have uh, so-called fortifications that back in the day when English came, uh, they were used to, you know, serve as a, a kind of lookout point and uh, a protection uh, when the uh, other boats were sailing from uh, from the sea, especially the pirates. One of this uh, fortification also present on uh, the island of Antigua, and it's the only fort that actually saw military action. It's called uh, Fort uh, Barrington, and. It's kind of located, as you can imagine, on the hill, all these forces, because it has to be a lookout point also. So they pick uh, the highest point uh, close to the sea and build these fortifications. So we're walking right now to Fort Barrington, and the best part about it is uh, it's right by the beach, beautiful beach called uh, Deep Bay, right behind me. Uh, it's a bit of a hike, but the best time to do it in my opinion early in the morning because as you can see the beach is empty and uh, the hike to the fort is also looks empty so I'm gonna go check that out. The hike to Fort Barrington from the beach lies through a small forest. <laughs> Google Maps don't do a very good job finding this beach or the Fort Barrington. Uh, it kind of leads to uh, Royalton uh, Resort. So then you have to somewhat take like a, a off 
off the grid uh, broken roads and you got to the point where you will see this bridge here and then you start crossing that bridge and you'll see a kind of two path one will go up to the fort and another would lead you to the beach the hike itself is fairly easy but you'll probably need a pair of sneakers at least definitely don't do this in sandals <laughs> no flip flops are you okay? Whoa. Careful. It's beautiful. So it'll come out. What is that? It's a hermit crab. After climbing uphill for about 10 minutes, we found ourselves atop of giant semicircular gun emplacement with stunning panoramic views of the harbor, deep bay, and the open sea. Fort Barrington uh, was named after English Admiral and he fortified it in the late 18th century. At the time, the fort had about 36 cannons and about 75 staff living here. Uh, we saw some uh, barracks downstairs. Uh, soldiers were living here on a regular basis and their job was to protect the island and uh, warn the other parts of the island if they saw any uh, boats coming from uh, any direction. If you can see here, the location was chosen for a reason because you have an open view for every direction uh, from the sea. Hiking here is strongly recommended by me personally because uh, I had a great morning. We went to uh, Deep Bay Beach, which was empty, and then we did a little hike uh, to here. And I feel great, like feel great sense of accomplishment already. So I'd highly recommend that because once you get to the top, first of all, you get stunning views. And secondly, you get to experience a piece of uh, Antigua's uh, history as this fort is the only fort that actually saw uh, battle back in the day. Another morning, uh, another beach. Uh, today we're at uh, Galley Beach and uh, it's located right beside the Deep Bay Beach, the one that we went to yesterday. Right next to the Deep Bay, just over the hill with private villas, there is another stunning beach. This area is home to the Galley Bay. Booking.com describes it as a private white sand beach because of the resort here, but it is misleading. You can access it freely, although it seems they make it as hidden as possible and as difficult as possible to locate the entrance here. But remember this, according to Antigua's law, section 50.1 states that there shall be at least one public landward access to and right of way to every beach. And most importantly, section 50.2, where there is no alternative public access through, private development shall be sufficient grounds for establishing a public right of way. So yes, you have every right to enjoy this place and don't be intimidated by fancy resorts. Galli Beach is known for the fact that uh, famous Italian uh, designer Giorgio Armani owns the villa here, which is right behind me. Right next to the beach, you'll find a set of cliffside villas that look like private residences. The highlight here is this complex. It belongs to the Italian designer Giorgio Armani. I initially thought it was just one house, but after putting my drone up, I noticed that most of these villas were connected by a network of terraces that offered passage, which meant that it is the whole resort that is owned by him. Not too shabby if you ask me. There is another resort here called Gali Bay with private villas, access to the beach, pools and some strange body of water on another side. If you are looking for privacy and pristine clean beach, Gali Bay would be a good choice. It concludes my top 3 list on the west side of the island. And of course there are many more, but it will take this whole episode to cover all of them. But uh, I just want to say that I love the fact that Antigua has so many cool beaches. I truly start to appreciate uh, and I believe this is the main uh, attraction, this is the main treasure of this country, it's uh, 
its amazing, beautiful postcard-like beaches. Uh, we come to different beach every morning with no expectations, but once we arrive, it's just stunning. It's one stunning beach after another. Having said that, we just experienced so far the west coast, and uh, let's go in and uh, explore the rest of the island. Located in the northwest part of the island and surrounded by pristine beaches, the capital of Antigua, a city of St. John's, is home to about 20,000 residents. It is the largest town in the country. Obviously, it is far from a cosmopolitan metropolis, yet by the local standards it can be quite hectic. The city is a mixture of colonial era buildings with some modern new builds. With tourism accounting for more than 50% of country's GDP and employing about half of the population, Antigua is well positioned to deal with the influx of tourists. I'd imagine for many of them, the first impression of St. John's is the massive city's port. It is large enough to accommodate five modern cruises concurrently, and probably one of the most popular ports in the region. It has one of the better waterfronts, developed into outdoor shopping mall with casinos, restaurants, gift shops to cater to tourists. Most of the shops here are typical duty frees, selling a wide range of products including Antigua's classic rum. Obviously, uh, when you're in the Caribbean, gotta grab a bottle of rum. Try it out. Of course, many tour operators selling up shops here to sell daily tours with pickup and drop-offs at the docks. Take my contact, you need to send me that. My friend? Thank you. Although it's worth noting that I didn't see any shops to showcase Antigua's indigenous craft and cultural heritage. We are at the harbor. This is the place where uh, the cruise ship come and docks for a day and then people walk on these boardwalks into the city, uh, whatever activity they have planned. But if you can see right now, there are four of them here and they are pretty massive. Uh, there's a bunch of duty-free shops here, a uh, bunch of restaurants. Uh, people just stop for, I don't know, half a day and then they go back. One thing that catches your eye here is how colorful St. John's is. Antiguans are definitely not shy of bright colors, as they use them practically on every second building. This gives St. John's its charm and makes even the ugliest structure here look pretty. So there are two uh, sort of touristy and historical areas uh, in St. John's. Once uh, the cruise ships come, uh, there is a place called Heritage Key, uh, which has a bunch of small restaurants and gift shops and whatnot. And right now I'm walking on a street called uh, Radcliffe, uh, Radcliffe Key or Way, whatever, uh, whatever people call it. But uh, this is a significant street because it is a historical street. So this is one of the main avenues uh, in St. John. And right now, um, it's obviously quite busy. A lot of colorful uh, buildings, a lot of shops. More intended for tourists, obviously, because uh, this is the first street they see when they uh, dock. Uh, but there is something that you probably should check out uh, while you're at uh, St. John's. However, having uh, explored the capital, it's uh, quite busy, uh, as you would expect, a lot of hustle and bustle, but it's a nice walk down, especially if you're going towards the uh, cruise ships. There are many uh, prominent figures on the island. However, there's one person that stands out, and uh, he was the father of the modern uh, Antigua and Barbuda. Antigua gained uh, its independence in 1981 and uh, this man played uh, a, a huge part uh, in Antigua's uh, independence movement. Once you're in the capital, um, just behind me, that's uh, VC Bird, uh, which is uh, considered to be very very, very respectful on the island. Uh, he did a lot of good for Antigua, including uh, electricity around the island, free education, 
Uh, he was knighted uh, by, uh, well, he's supposed to be knighted by Queen of England, but he refused and he was actually knighted internally by uh, Antiguans. So, prominent figure, another landmark once you are in uh, St. John's. This bird also uh, took Antigua away from uh, sugar dependency and took the economy to the next level. He introduced the tourism and uh, built the uh, network of roads, uh, infrastructure, and that's when um, Antigua and Barbuda uh, moved to uh, different sources of income for uh, GDP. One of the most prominent landmarks of St. John's is located at the top of the hill. It is the late 19th century cathedral designed by the Canadian architect. It is a blend of Baroque and Georgian architecture. To address the major hazards of hurricanes and earthquakes, the wooden interior was housed within the wall of a stone structure. I was actually surprised by the interior, as I was expecting stone walls inside, but it is finished with teak wood and without a trace of masonry. The space felt somewhat tropical and perhaps even exotic in a way. A very different style of uh, cathedral inside. Everything was made of wood. Uh, it looked pretty cool actually. But uh, they're having a uh, mass right now, uh, so well, they're about to. So. Another thing about Antigua to keep in mind, uh, because it's an uh, uh, ex-colony, uh, uh, English colony, there's a lot of English uh, influence here. And if you can see, I'm sitting on the right side in the car, and uh, obviously they follow the UK style of driving here. It takes about, uh, I don't know, half a day to adjust, but something to keep in mind, uh, especially in the Caribbean country like that. Uh, we're finishing off with, uh, I guess, the downtown or like the center of St. John's and we have a few more places to see around uh, and then uh, the rest of the trip is gonna be somewhere outside uh, the capital. Um, we're trying to explore the island, that's why we rented this uh, old Mitsubishi. Uh, so yeah, so uh, stay tuned and uh, a lot of good stuff to come. Due to its strategical importance, St. John's have been heavily fortified to prevent the attacks from the sea. The city is guarded by two fortresses at the mouth of St. John's Harbor. Fort Barrington I have shown you already, another one is Fort James. Both are about 15 to 20 minute ride from the capital. The construction of Fort James began in the early 1700s and lasted for about three decades. Named after King James II, it is a relatively small fort that once was home to about 70 soldiers and 36 cannons, many of which are still present here. And this is how they were shooting the pirates facing the sea to the north. Do not expect to see impressive views from here. However, if you want to experience part of history for the founding of St. John's and have time to do so, I'd recommend making a quick stop, especially because you most likely won't encounter any tourists here. Few facts about uh, this beautiful country. First of all, a lot of people make a mistake and call it Antigua. It's actually Antigua, Antigua. But I wanted to give you a quick, um, rundown on the history of this country specifically and also on the region the west indies or um, uh, east caribbean so it kind of applies to all of it but um, back in the day this uh, islands um, they were settled by native tribes different tribes uh, from central america from uh, even north america they were coming in here and settling the latest tribe that was present on this island of Antigua uh, was a tribe called Caribs. And this is the tribe that faced uh, Columbus and the English after. So when the English came, they discovered the sugar cane on this island and uh, obviously they decided to take over. Uh, they came here, they killed most of the native people, they enslaved the rest 
and now the problem was they did not have enough manpower to cultivate the sugarcane and the other um, stuff that they found here so they brought in uh, slaves from uh, Africa and uh, the current population of Antigua and uh, most of the Caribbeans the black population basically descendants of the uh, African slaves that were brought here by British uh, in the beginning of 17th century. And this brings us to Betty's Hope Sugar Plantation, another historical monument of Antigua established in 1650, shortly after English took over the island. It flourished as a successful agricultural and industrial enterprise at the expense of slave labor. Slaves lived in these huts here. Sugarcane was manually brought to the mill until the introduction of railway in 1904. Today, Betty's Hope is no longer operational as a plantation. It has been restored in 1990s and very little reminds of those brutal times when close to 500 slaves were used to enrich another British family. Betty's Hope played an important role in country's history and influenced the lives of many generations. It remains an important heritage site of Antigua and Barbuda, a site that could never be forgotten. Good morning, another beautiful morning. Uh, today we're exploring the other part of the island. Uh, we're going down to the east coast and then uh, we're gonna go to the south. So stay tuned, should be a lot of fun. Let's go. Today is all about Antigua. I want to learn as much about this country as possible. In fact, the full name of the country is Antigua and Barbuda. And Antigua, uh, the name comes from uh, Christopher Columbus actually. He named it after the church in uh, Sevilla. Barbuda on the other hand means, means bearded. And there are different versions why. Uh, some say once uh, they sailed to the coast of Barbuda Island, they saw a bearded man and that's how they called it. But anyways, uh, today we're going to uh, the western, uh, the, sorry, the eastern part and the southern part of the island. Uh, this parts of the island have uh, plenty of uh, historic landmarks, which I hope will, uh, will help me uh, learn about uh, this beautiful country more. But a uh, beautiful morning, uh, lots of uh, traffic because it's a school day, uh, we're heading down east. After about one hour drive, we hit the east coast of the island. Our first stop was a natural phenomena called Devil's Bridge. It is located outside the village called Vilikis and offers a stunning glimpse into Antigua's natural formation. Composed of limestone rock, the rock terrain of Devil's Bridge is the result of millions of years of ancient reef formation. I apologize for the quality of this uh, audio, but uh, it's so windy here. Uh, we came to see the Devil's Bridge and uh, it's definitely a drastic change comparing to the western part of the island. Uh, here you have an Atlantic Ocean and so you can imagine it's more windy here and uh, the waves are like crazy. But uh, it's, uh, it's a cool spot to see because you have this natural bridge uh, made of rocks and I'm getting so wet right now from, uh, from the ocean so I'm not gonna you know, attempt going there but it's uh, definitely a cool spot to come and check out. 
Before we get to our final spot, there are a couple of attractions on the island that's worth mentioning. The first one is a swim with stingrays. However, after learning about the fact that stingrays are being overfed or sometimes have their stinger spines removed to please tourists, we felt somewhat uncomfortable and decided to move on on something more ethical. We go every day at 9-11 and 1 o'clock the duration is an hour and 30 minutes in total. The drive to the next place wasn't particularly easy, but we were determined to find it. We're not giving up. Here we go. Piggies. After initially GPS sent us to two different locations, we finally found ourselves at the remote beach. We arrived to a very unique attraction uh, they have here. Yesterday we went to a stingrays and uh, we had a odd feeling about it uh, because we thought it was a bit uh, cruel what they do to uh, stingrays. But there is an alternative here and uh, uh, it's quite difficult to get to but uh, it seems to be like a popular attraction. Uh, check this out. I mean it was okay but after finding out a cost to take a photo with the pig it definitely felt like a touristy trap. What did you think? Very adorable. Is it worth seventy dollars? Um. Personally, I would not recommend it, especially because it takes quite some time to get here. But let's move on to our final location on the south tip of the island. We are done with uh, uh, the east part of the island, and now we're moving towards the English Harbor towards the historic uh, sort of area of Antigua. Nielsen's Dockyard is one of the finest existing examples of Georgian naval dockyard in its original form. Many of the 18th and 19th century buildings have been adapted for modern day needs and enhance the rich culture and natural environment. Fortifications around English Harbor provided the British Navy with a secure base from which they maintained control of trade-oriented colonies throughout the Caribbean. Surrounding hills and the narrow winding inlets protect the dockyard from the northeast trade winds and the open sea. Early settlers were attracted to the area, and the plantation economy of the latter settlers was defended by patrols of naval ships that were once repaired at this dockyard. Forts were built here to protect Nielsen's docks from the attack of French pirates, also known as privateers, who were attracted to this area by rich Caribbean sugar trade. Wooden sailing ships were exposed to multiple dangers, and one of the most annoying and damaging was Teredo Worm. This would infest the hulls of the ship, creating holes in the exposed wood. As a result, ships needed constant repairs, and English Harbor with its calm waters and sheltered base was a perfect place to do this. We just arrived to uh, Nelson's Dockyard, and uh, it is a historic uh, site on Antigua. Uh, essentially what was happening is when English would come to these islands and uh, establish their presence, uh, they would uh, usually settle uh, in the harbor and uh, all the admirals or key people that London would send to control the island would uh, build the houses here and small little settlements and so this Nelson uh, dockyard in the English Bay is uh, an example of it. Uh, so here you see uh, quite a few old houses from um, when the time when the English came and uh, they turn it into a sort of a touristy attraction, um, a very cute little uh, site uh, to come and see. Uh, it does cost money, it costs uh, around 15, I think 15 US or 40 uh, Eastern Caribbean dollars, but it also gives you a right to enter to a couple of look lookouts uh, around the area. Uh, would I recommend it? I think I would uh, because it's uh, very cute, photogenic, photographic I guess, uh, whatever the word is. 
and also you got to learn about the history of this island because uh, no matter what the history is, it is still the history. So uh, I would recommend coming in here. One of the sites that I would strongly recommend visiting here is the local museum. In my opinion, it is also one of the most beautiful buildings here. The Dockyard Museum was built in 1855 and originally served as officers' headquarters in the Royal Navy Dockyard. Restored in 1970s, the building served as offices for the national parks before opening its doors as a museum in 1997. Today, the museum presents the history of Nelson's Dockyard alongside exhibits that highlight current archaeological and historical research in Antigua. On the ground floor, you can learn about the history and the development of the yard and the people who worked here. It is essential to note that without African labor, the dockyard could not have survived. Most of the labor here was involuntary, carried by the slaves. These were men owned by the Crown, who spent their lives working in the dockyards. On the 8th of March 1744, an explosion ripped through the English harbor, killing eight enslaved African men. This event gave a push to the 8th of March project that targets to uncover the daily lives of the enslaved men who lived and worked around this area. Upstairs, the military history of the English harbor is told. I personally found this visit very educational and satisfying. After the independence of Antigua and Barbuda, the parliament made the dockyard and surrounding areas a national park. In 2016, the park received UNESCO World Heritage Site designation. Over the past 20 years, the dockyard has been developed into a mixed-use complex. Aside from being an active marina for luxury yachts, there are many restaurants, shops and even a luxury hotel. Included under the UNESCO designation are various fortifications around English Bay, which were constructed to protect the area from the invaders. Among them is Shirley Heights Lookout, the place we headed to to observe a panoramic views of the harbor after having a delicious local meal. And so our time at this beautiful country, Antigua, has come to its end. We spent a few days here and enjoyed every single of them. Uh, beautiful beaches, beautiful weather, great people, great culture, and lots of history. I strongly recommend uh, you come and visit. However, for us, we gotta move on, and the next destination for us is gonna be Granada, which is a bit south of Antigua. Having said that, definitely recommend Antigua. Thank you so much. Thank you, Barbuda, even though I never saw you. Stay adventurous, stay safe, and stay loved. I'll see you in Granada. Ciao.